Hello, I'm Sahil Kukreja, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco Secure Web Appliance. In this video, let us take a look at the SWS Hybrid Mode capabilities. Before we start with the actual configuration, let's first see from the architectural standpoint how this hybrid secure web gateway solution can leverage the deeper integration between on-premise secure web appliance and cloud-native SWG solution. One of the prominent use cases for such a solution is when an organization, due to compliance requirements, can't deploy cloud proxy solution or they are still in early phase of migrating their infrastructure to the cloud. As you can see in the architecture, the SWN first needs to be registered with Umbrella Org, which not just makes the integration seamless but secure as well, before the policies can be translated and synchronized with the on-premise appliance. The common reporting dashboard can also be enabled for displaying the user activity on a single dashboard for this hybrid solution. All right. In the first step, we need to register our secure web appliance with Cisco Umbrella. To do that, you can log into Cisco Umbrella dashboard and let navigate to Deployments, Registered Appliances. As you can see, there is a, already an appliance registered for my org, but what we are going to do in this particular demo is we are going to register another device. So let's do that. Let's navigate to admin, API keys, and create a new key pay, key and the secret pair. We can name it as SWG hybrid demo, and let's select auth, API auth, and SWA. And also, let's go to deployments and select registered appliances with Reader write permissions. Let's create this key pair. And now we have the API key and the secret ready. We can copy the key. Go to our secure web appliance and navigate to network umbrella settings. As you can see here, hybrid services are currently not registered with umbrella. Let's click on edit settings and provide our API key and the secret. Let's click on register. Let's wait for the appliance to make a connection to umbrella dashboard. And once the device is successfully registered, you should see the message as shown above. We can enable the hybrid policy and the hybrid reporting services selectively using these checkboxes. Before doing that, let me quickly show you that currently we don't have any identification profiles or access policies or decryption policies on this particular appliance. So as you can see on these screens, currently there are no policies here, but let's just go ahead and enable the hybrid policies and hybrid reporting. Now that we enable the hybrid policy and hybrid rep reporting, um, so all the policies that you are going to create on the umbrella, the web policies will be translated and pushed down to the SWAs that are registered. Let's just quickly go to the deployments and registered appliances on the umbrella dashboard. Since we just registered the appliance, you can see here that WSA 004.dc1.cisco DMC got registered. Now there are two appliances in this list. And this is the latest one that we are using right here. As you can see here, the policy push is selected to yes, and the policies will be translated and pushed down to this particular appliance. Now, let's go to the policies, web policy, and create a policy that we are, or create a rule set that we are going to push to the SWA. So let's create or add a new web policy here. Um, and we are going to create this rule set. Let's name it as um, SWA 
authenticate it. Users and save this. Let's select the 80 users. In the next step, let's enable the HTTPS inspection and select the pass through list. As you can see here, we are going to bypass the proxy inspe SSL inspection for these categories and the domains as mentioned here. Let's save this and create a new rule. In this rule, we are going to block the social networking sites. Let's select the identity as AD user and we can further narrow down our search to the user level or at the group level. Let's select the content category here as social networking. So as you can see here, social networking has been selected. Also, let's select streaming audio and streaming videos. And let's save this. Also, let's go ahead and burn a few categories. For example, our new sites. Um, again, we can go ahead and select the users. And in the content categories, we are going to select news. Let's save this. And let's allow some custom categories here. And set that to allowed. Again, let's select the same user that we have been using for this particular demo. Go to the destination. And then we can go ahead and allow, for example, e-commerce sites. Now, let us quickly enable these rules. All right, the rules have been enabled. Also, we can select the Microsoft 365 compatibility here, which will be in turn translated to the Office 365 capability that the SWA provides. Now that we have the rule set ready to be pushed down to our appliance, let's quickly go ahead and check the registered appliances page. As you can see here, currently it shows a minute ago the last policy sync time. Let's just wait for a few more seconds so that all our changes have been pushed down to the appliance successfully. Okay, let's go and check the identification profiles on our secure web appliance. So as you can see here, an umbrella global identity has already been created. Let's check the access policies first. Let us refresh this page because the partial push has been done. Let's wait for the access policies and decryption policies to be created on the appliance. So as you can see here, now the policy sync time says it, it just got pushed to the appliance. Let's refresh this page as well. As you can see here, now we have the custom categories and the other rules that we created are also showing up on this particular dashboard. So we blocked the social networking slide, including the so streaming video and the streaming audio. Also with that, we enable the Office 365 and few other categories to set to pass through. As you can see here, there are six categories which have been set to pass through, including the of Microsoft 365 and the pass through list that we selected and also the categories including the finance, health and medicine and social networking right here. 
Now, let's go ahead and check our custom categories. So, let's jump on to the custom categories. Um, and you can see here, there's a translation done for the Microsoft 365 sites. And the feeds have been pulled from the particular endpoint which is provided by the Microsoft itself. SWA provides you to see the content of these particular feeds that Microsoft provides. Now, quickly, now with the help of some real browser traffic, let's see if the registered appliance, which has got the policy synced with umbrella, can apply the matching rules that we created under the web policies on umbrella dashboard. Let's quickly go to some internet website and see if the traffic can be blocked. For example, we are blocking the streaming audio sites category here. And also, if we go to some news website, it gives us the warning page or the acknowledgement page, which the user can click on accept and continue. Now, as you can see, the rules can be applied. Similarly, we can go to some of the e-commerce sites, for example, here, which have been set to allowed. In this next segment, we are going to look at the reporting capabilities. Let us go to Umbrella Dashboard and go to Activity Search under Reporting. As you can see here, we'll have the option to filter our search to Secure Web Appliance, which is a new option provided under the identity type. Let's select Secure Web Appliance here and look for the transactions that we made. For example, CNN.com. And as you can see here, the rule which is getting applied is SWA Authenticate Users and the rule name is New Sites. The internal IP address is 192.168.103.11, which is the client IP address and the external IP address as shown here is the IP address of the appliance, the secure web appliance we have been using. Also the action or the disposition Finally, now let's take a look at deregistering the appliance from the given umbrella org. To do that, proceed to network umbrella settings and disable the hybrid policy and the reporting services. You have to submit and commit this change before deregistering the appliance with the key and the secret pair that was previously generated from the umbrella dashboard. Let's now quickly generate a new set of API key and the secret. So you can click on the refresh key to generate a new pair. Now you have to copy this key and the secret and provide it here under umbrella settings on the appliance page at the time of deregistering the device you'll see this acknowledgement that while you are deregistering you can still keep the umbrella manage policies or you can also delete them for instance in this case I'm going to delete the policies that were previously created and synced with this particular appliance so now you can see the appliance has been successfully deregistered and let's just quickly take a look at the policies and those should be cleared from this particular appliance. Okay, let's go to identification profiles and you can see here all the profiles that were previously created are now erased off from this device and the appliance is back in the factory settings. Also, if we go back to the registered appliances page on the umbrella dashboard, we should see that the previously registered appliance has been removed from this page as well.
This brings us to the end of this demo. To know more about the solution or schedule a POV, please reach out to wsa-pm at cisco.com or wsa-dme at cisco.com. Hope you will find this video useful. Thanks for watching.